In our morning rounds, more evidence showing how sleep protects our health. A new study from the American Heart Association finds sleeping less than six hours a night could more than double the risk of death for people with metabolic syndrome. That includes risk factors for heart disease, diabetes, and stroke. Our Dr. Tara Narula is a cardiologist at Northwell Health. Good morning. Good morning, Before Nora. we get to the sleep thing real quick, what exactly is metabolic syndrome? A lot of people don't know what it is. Yeah. So it's essentially a cluster of cardiovascular risk factors that raises your cardiovascular risk. If you have three out of these five, then you're diagnosed with metabolic syndrome. And those things are elevated or enlarged waist circumference, a low HDL, high triglycerides, high blood pressure, and high fasting blood sugar. Um, 30 to 40 percent of the American population has metabolic syndrome. In this study, about 39 percent, so very common. So what's the connection between the people that have it and sleep? Well, as Nora pointed out, in this study, they found that people got less than six hours. We're not only at increased risk of dying of cardiovascular disease, but we're at increased risk of dying of mortality, just all causes of mortality. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of hypotheses as to why this might be. Yeah. We know that lack of sleep can change brain areas like the hypothalamus and hormone secretion to potentially increase appetite, can turn on your sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight, which could raise your blood pressure. Um, it can change hormone secretion like growth growth hormone and cortisol, your stress hormone, that could cause uh, imbalances in your glucose uh, metabolism and regulation. So there's there are mechanisms this by all which... Comes from whether you get X number of hours of sleep? Exactly. Exactly. That's the thinking. And obviously the recommendation is about seven to eight hours a night. So the mean average in this study was about six hours. My, they break, the, the study okay. broke new ground on measuring sleep, right? It, it did. So for most work in, in this area, they ask people, how much did you sleep? So it's self-reported. But in this study, they put them in a lab and they basically measured how much sleep they were getting uh, in the laboratory research setting. So it's a little bit more accurate. Obviously, it was only one night. So, you know, we can't draw, you know, a lot out of this one study, but... But they're sleeping in their sleep. I yeah. mean, how do you measure what's really good sleep and what sleep is not that... Well, what, one of the interesting things about this study that they also did differently is that they kind of factored out uh, what we call sleep disordered breathing or things like obstructive sleep apnea because we know that that raises cardiovascular risk. And so in most sleep studies, we don't really know was it the sleep apnea or was it the sleep time. But in this study, they kind of took that out of the equation, really focused on just the duration of sleep. And for the nappers of the world, does it matter? <laughs> the like nappers, you? hello, my like name you, is Charlie, Charlie Rose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, does yeah. it simply mean the number of yeah. total hours you get in a 24-hour period? It Not really, necessarily how much you get at one plea. It means the consistent number at night. The napping is not really included in that, mm -hmm. unfortunately, Charlie. Yeah. But there's a take home <laughs> message for everybody, isn't there? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought I was okay. No, Nora, hold him to your bosom. He needs some rocking. Yes, hold him yes he does. Bosom. There you go. You're right. I need this. For yeah. <laughs> I feel better okay. But even if you don't have any of these risk factors, it yes. still is an issue, is it not? It is. It's so a big takeaway message for everybody. Big takeaway message it needs to be a priority. We all sacrifice it for social engagements for work we need to make it a priority that's it, it how else do we get other better sleep than making it a priority well you have to practice good sleep hygiene going to bed and waking up at the same time every day cool quiet dark room put away your devices yeah thank yes. you all right thank, thank you. you Tara good to see you how are you feeling Gail do you need a hug too yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need your bosom too <laughs> that's actually I do well, we it's thought, not very big we but Brian I can Cranston help. was quite <laughs> enough wasn't Cranston enough yeah that's okay I like to be love the intimacy